Thank you all for coming today. When I stood here on Monday with the mayor to declare the state of emergency, we made it clear that we would fulfill our oath of office and protect the health and safety of our entire community. Today, I believe we are fulfilling that oath by taking the difficult but necessary action of declaring a shelter in place order across the city of Fresno. At this time, Asia and Europe are on lockdown. The coronavirus is on all 50 states, 37 of which closed their school districts. In California, 8 million residents are living under a similar shelter in place order. The federal government has been clear with us. They expect us to take immediate protective measures to flatten the curve of infection and to do what's necessary to avoid overwhelming the healthcare capacity of our system. Our governor has signed, has signed, our governor has signed several ex executive orders that give us the tools to achieve this goal. This leaves a critical responsibility in the next steps to our local elected officials. That step is action. Fresno cannot pass a buck. As President Truman so clearly stated, the buck stops here and with us. Our city manager, our city council mayor are owning the responsibility to take surgical action so that we can save as many lives as possible during this pandemic. The more infection cases we prevent, the less we stress our delicate healthcare systems of clinics and hospitals, and the better we, they can do to their job in saving lives. We're painfully aware of the wages and jobs at the national, local, and in our neighborhoods. But our priority is to ensure that pandemic does not result in preventable, preventable one life that we could have prevented is one too many. On a personal note, I'd like to tell you that this is not just a policy decision for us. It's not an easy decision. All of us are impacted by this personally. I'm a father. My kids have lost their school. As a son, my parents are both vulnerable. They're both stuck at home. My youngest sibling lost his hourly wage job. My older sibling has shut down his business because of this pandemic. This is a decision that's real, it's painful, and it's difficult. But our job is to make sure that we look out for the health of the whole city. With that, um, I want to thank the mayor for his courage in leading our whole valley and our city in this difficult time, and for the council for their thoughtful, deliberate, discussions and their collaboration with the county officials. Um, we just finished a meeting with the County Board of Supervisors and the other county officials and we are trying to move as thoughtfully as possible. Um, and so I'm grateful that we have the mayor that we have today who's working with everybody on trying to move us in a way that prevents the loss of life. Mayor Lebron. Good afternoon. And thank you all for being here today. I will repeat what I said on Monday when I declared a state of emergency. And I'll just say that this is the biggest decision any of us have ever made in our political careers. And it has profound implications, life and death implications. So we all take it very serious. And I know this is an anxious time for all of us. And the situation seems to change by the hour. But I want everyone to know the leaders here today we're doing everything we can to help guide our city through this crisis. Myself, the city manager, the city council, and the employees of the city of Fresno are completely united in our actions. More than anything else, I ask the people of Fresno to remain calm during this highly unusual, confusing, and stressful times. We're all in this together. Please understand that we do not, if we do not make these decisions lightly and, what, and they are made with abundance of caution, the better job that we do now in containing the spread of the coronavirus, the faster we'll be able to recover and the faster we'll be able to return to normal lives. This action we are taking today is for the sole purpose of prevention. Prevent more people from coming down with the virus and to protect the lives of our most vulnerable citizens. Therefore, 
effective just after midnight tonight at 12.01 a.m. Thursday, March 19th, we are issuing an emergency order calling for the people living in the city of Fresno to shelter in place until midnight Tuesday, March 31st. The purpose of this order is to make sure as many people as possible in Fresno isolate themselves and their family at home while still allowing you to make, take care of the basics of daily life, including picking up your groceries, doctor's visits, and the like. We're also asking everyone in Fresno to practice social distancing as much as possible. Stay six feet away from other people, and when you, <clears throat> when you go outside ho of your home, we also urge everyone to wash their hands for 20 seconds, and if that is not possible, use hand sanitizer. This order is being posted on the city's website with details for our people whose work is, with details on those people whose work is essential to the functions of daily life and those businesses which are encouraged to stay open with social distancing modifications. We ask our media partners to do, help us deliver a clear and simple message to the people of Fresno that we hope we have provided you with the information you need to do just that. Please join us in asking for calm. We are working with grocery stores to make sure everyone in our community, particularly people over the age of 65, disabled, and health vulnerabilities, have access to groceries and the staples of life. We plan to provide complete details by 5 p.m. tomorrow. There are plenty of groceries and food for everyone, so please just take what you need for your family. Also, please tell us, let us, also, excuse me, also, please join us in letting everyone in our community know that the faster we practice isolation and social distancing, the faster we can put this deadly disease behind us, and the faster we can recover personally, emotionally, and financially. I know what we are, we are asking you to do is a burden and not something I ever expected to be doing. This virus is too serious to do anything else. Please join us in beating the coronavirus by stopping its spread starting at midnight tonight. And with that, I'll introduce our next speaker, Assembly Member, Dr. Joaquin Aramula. Well, I'll try not to touch anything that everyone else has touched already nor think what we're speaking into this mic, but I thought it was incredibly important for me to be here today and to support our partners at the city who are being courageous and showing real leadership today by helping to protect our communities. You know, I wanted to talk about this emergency on two fronts, if I can. First, the health and safety aspects that this unprecedented crisis will have on so many members of our community. But I also wanted to talk about the economic impact that this has and is to come. First, I want to share with you what are the latest numbers regarding COVID-19 from as of Tuesday per our state public health officials to really set a ground for where we are now. As of the morning of March 17th in 2020, there have been a total of 472 confirmed cases for the state of California. 82 of these have been travel-related, 75 person-to-person, -person, 98 community transmission, and 193 are currently under investigation. There currently are 11 deaths for the state of California. In terms of hospital capacity as of March 15th, there are, are 74,000 hospital beds at 614 facilities. That leaves us a surge capacity of 8,661 beds that we currently have as of March 15th. There are 11,500 ICU beds, both including pediatric and neonatal for the state of California. There are 7,587 ventilators, and we recently have purchased 900 more ventilators to help us to meet our needs. We have a minimum of 75 excuse me, 70, 750 new beds, which will be added to surge capacity by the end of the week. I came today to tell you that the state of California is doing all it can right now. 
On Monday, the state legislature approved Governor Newsom's request for an immediate $500 million and up to $1 billion to fight the spread of the COVID-19 virus through a range of measures that include reopening healthcare facilities, acquiring more medical equipment, providing hotel rooms for the homeless, and assisting nursing homes and other facilities, funding strike teams to support seniors who are in isolation. When it comes to health and safety, I've seen as a doctor what happens if we don't take the necessary precautions to fight it. So each of us must do what we can to protect our families and our most vulnerable communities, including our elderly and our immigrant brothers and sisters. I urge, I urge you to follow the guidelines set before us by the Center for Disease Prevention and to continue to practice the hygienic measures that we have all been reminded of in these past weeks. If you're 65 or older, please isolate yourself at home. That same holds true if you have certain chronic health conditions. And I can't emphasize this enough, but practice social distancing and work from home if you can. My own office is working remotely, but we stand ready to assist those who need help. You can contact us through our phone numbers, visit us by our social media platforms, or by emailing us at our website, www.a31.asmdc.org. And I do need to say this about social distancing. Many people are doing so, but I am greatly concerned that not everyone is taking this seriously enough. We saw disturbing videos of crowds in Florida during spring break, as if nothing was happening right now in this. I need to remind you that you may not experience symptoms of COVID-19, but you can be a carrier. You can spread this virus to your parents, to your grandparents, and anyone else you come in contact with. Please don't be complacent about what is happening. We are currently battling an epidemic and a pandemic that is spreading across our worlds. Now I want to talk about the anxiety regarding what the coronavirus has done to our local economy. I know that many lives now are drastically different from what they were just a week ago. The actions that the legislature took on Monday recognize the hardships triggered by this emergency, and we are working to make sure that assistance is available during this crisis and after it's over. On Monday, for example, the Small Business Administration approved an economic disaster loan assistance declaration for the state of California, which makes loans available to small businesses and other entities. Many counties have already declared a state of emergency to be in line for these types of funds. Fresno County, however, only did so yesterday and unfortunately will be at the back of the pack. I want to applaud the city of Fresno for stepping up and taking actions to protect its residents. I also want to thank Governor Newsom for his leadership as well as his initiative shown by the Department of Public Health and our other state health experts. And I want to immensely thank those who are on the front lines. As a emergency room doctor, I know how important it is that our nurses our technicians, our physicians, those who continue to still show up every day, receive the appropriate amount of respect and appreciation from our communities. They are putting their own lives at risk to help take care of the most vulnerable in our communities. And I think we have to make sure that they understand how much we need them and appreciate them. Right now, we must focus on the health and safety of our communities. I urge everyone to follow the directives of your local governments, as well as your state and federal governments. 
seek updated information from those official agencies through their websites and our social media platforms. Finally, be vigilant and considerate during this emergency. Volunteer if you can help those who need assistance and support. We have to make sacrifices for the greater good, especially to protect the most vulnerable amongst us. Together, we will get through this. So we'll take questions now. So the administrative order um, was approved and signed by the city manager under the powers granted to her by the city council as the director of emergency response uh, during the declaration of uh, disaster and emergency. So there's no requirement for the council to vote on it. Um, as she makes administrative orders, we will routinely ratify them as a council as, as, as it is necessary by our charter. It's to, we're asking the members of the public to, as much as possible, to stay at home uh, with your family and only do those trips necessary, like going to doctor's appointments, picking up groceries, and so on, to isolate yourself from the spread of this disease. And we've seen it in so many cities and countries across the world in the last couple of months. It starts out benign with a, a case here and a case there, but rapidly escalates exponentially. So. We, we hope this is through March 31st, which is two weeks. We'll reevaluate on March 31st. And our goal is by doing more assertive actions now, we can shorten the, the, uh, the duration that we're going to have to take this, these, the you know, these burden of staying home, not going to work, and so on. So there's no easy path, and it's going to be painful for all of us, but we're all in it together, and the city leaders here are doing the best we can to save our, our citizens and contain the spread of this virus. Are there any businesses that will mandate these posts? No, we basically there's a long list that the city attorney has and it should be posted on our website of exemptions, you know, healthcare, uh, public safety, businesses that provide the food chain. There's a long list of, of uh, businesses that are exempt from uh, this, this order. And we're trying to do, you know, trying to make it as minimal as possible while at the same time protecting the citizens of this community. Are houses of worship, are the They're subject to the, the ten person and social distancing. So this would apply to funerals, to weddings, so you can imagine this has a big impact on our community, but everybody is facing the same restrictions. And the sooner we get out of this, that's our goal, to get returned to normalcy. So it's gonna to be tough for the next few weeks. Pardon? They are, under this, this administrative order, uh, they are closed. And why is that? Because they're not deemed essential businesses or services. How do you find your well, I'm going to ask far enough. It's well, the problem across the state, the problem across the world in many places is a lack of testing. We simply don't have the capability to test. So if there's only two people out there now, there's probably, based on other experiences, probably hundreds of people out there. Maybe Dr. Ramia can I want to address that. Let me make sure I have the appropriate distance, but I think the term within public health that many are trying to really address with policies that are before the county and city are to flatten the curve. And if you don't know what that is, I'd look up the Twitter handler. You may want to look at the graph that's behind me on the left. Essentially what it is is we need to decrease the number of people who are sick because we have a capacity within our healthcare delivery system. We only have so many beds. We only have so many ventilators. We only have so many ICU beds. And we have to have real conversations about how many people can be sick at the same time. The measures that this city is taking are 
to help us to flatten that curve and to decrease the spread that is exponentially growing as shown through other areas around the world. And if, if I may, you know, we, we've been working in consultation with the County of Fresno and before coming here, we're a little late to start the meeting because we were meeting with the supervisors and some county officials. And what they informed us was that of the approximately million residents in the County of Fresno, only about 200 have been tested so far. So like us, they expect that there'll be more folks who are infected and carrying and not showing symptoms and others who are um, showing symptoms that haven't been tested. So um, we all acknowledge that so far we have two cases until they update the numbers, but our goal is to try and avoid more people being infected and sick all at the same time. And, and I would like to say something if I can too, uh, since everybody's already spoken. Uh, first of all, I personally uh, want to thank all the doctors, the nurses, the first responders on the front lines uh, fighting coronavirus and actually saving American lives. And I want to thank the grocery workers and delivery workers and truck drivers for keeping the shelves stocked and essential supplies delivered. And I want to encourage our residents to support our local residents across the food industry by continuing to order takeout, utilize their drive through and their delivery services. Everybody has a critical role to play. But I want to encourage people, there is there is a CDC and guidelines, and you can go to coronavirus.gov and find out exactly what the guidelines are. For example, they tell you, if you feel sick, stay home. Children are sick, keep them home. Anyone's tested positive in the family, everybody should be checked. If you're older, obviously, we want you to stay home. If you have a compromised system, stay home. Again, read the guidelines. They're very clear. And, and I want to say, you know, FDR said many years ago, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And people have been frightened, rightfully so. There hasn't been a lot of information, but it's important to keep context. It's always important to keep context. We have people who get the flu every year, 36 to 51 million people. There's 22 to 60,000 deaths every year. We don't shut down the entire country over that. I understand this is different and this is serious. It's a pandemic. We need. It's important not to live your life in fear. Now, my concern about this emergency order, and I supported the emergency order earlier this week, but my concern about a shelter in place is we still don't have enough data. We're waiting for data from the county. There have been two people who have been confirmed. Those two people had left the country and came here. I'd like to see more data. Fresno County has not declared a shelter in place yet. The city of Clovis has not. I would like to see us be more coordinated in our efforts. And I know we're waiting for more data. That's important. We should be responding to data. I'm concerned that in this order, the homeless are exempt. Now, why are the homeless exempt? Why are we telling our citizens to be sheltered, but we're letting our homeless, many who are involved in drugs and spreading disease, and they're exempt. That's completely unacceptable to me. They should not be all along our streets, outside our businesses, on the sidewalks, in embankments, while we're telling people to stay home. That message is completely inconsistent with health, safety, and welfare. Now, the non-essential businesses, the way we have this set up now, you can go to Clovis or you can go to Fresno County. That doesn't make a lot of sense. We ought to have a coordinated effort. And I really am concerned about our businesses, our small businesses, our workers that we've shut down. We shut down restaurants. People who live paycheck to paycheck are now out of a job and they have to pay the same bills. And government workers, government elected officials, their check always comes in. And I'm concerned about that person. That person who has kids at home, has to pay for childcare, has to meet their medical bills, and we have basically put them out of work. I'm all for the social distancing. I'm all for proper hygiene. We need to encourage that. We need to get a handle on this, but we need to always be sensitive to the decisions that we're making. And for example, I know that the elbow room is shutting down. There's 70 employees that are losing their jobs. Those are real people. That's one business. 
And that's not including all the other businesses that were shutting down. So I think this ought to be driven by data. If we look at the South Korea model, they test, they monitor, and they self-quarantine people who have symptoms. They don't tell people not to go to work. They don't shut down the entire economy. And they've been very successful at reducing the spread of coronavirus. So we need to do a better job, obviously, at testing. We've been behind the curve on that. So we've got to get better at that. But I think uh, being critical of the county is the uh, wrong approach. They're trying to get a handle on it. I know all five county board of supervisors, and they take their jobs very seriously, as does the CEL, CAO. They're working closely with our city manager and along with the city of Clovis. So I think coming here and criticizing them is the wrong approach. And I know they're doing a great job. So we all have to come together. We can't let fear rule the day. Let's prevent this. Let's remember, we're Americans. There isn't any challenge we don't meet. There isn't any challenge we don't overcome. And we will overcome this too, working together and having real data, real knowledge. Go to coronavirus.gov. Learn what you really need to do to protect yourself. And let's not let fear rule the day. Thank you, Council Member Bredefield, for your thoughtful comments. Mr. President, I'd like a moment, please. You'll have a quick moment, and then we will conclude the, this meeting. And we will take questions, um, individual interviews um, after that. Thank you. I want to make it very clear with my colleagues up here. We've been working nonstop with the mayor for days on this issue. We are unified. We are working closely with the county and rural communities on this, and we are united. This is not a time for political speeches. This is a time for unity. Now, my family, I don't just rely on a government paycheck. My family for 41 years has had a small business. We've been closed since Friday, and we chose to do that because we're willing to make the sacrifice for this community. The decision to be able to shut down a business is a very, very serious power, and it's not taken lightly. It's a hard pill to swallow, but we are committed, and we are looking at data to make sure we can make the responsible decision for the public. We are committed to doing that as your counsel, and um, again, we are unified. It's about unity and not politics right now. Thank you. Thank you, council member. With that, we adjourn the meeting at 2.07. Uh, yes, the meeting is officially adjourned, but the mayor still has the floor with the reporters. I just want to say I respect uh, the, the, the uh, words of Councilman Bredefield. I've struggled with this myself, but we are dealing with an extraordinary resiliency in this virus with an amazing ability to exponentially expand, I think like anything we've seen before. And the test is with what level are we too little and what little are we too much? I don't know where that is exactly. I don't think anybody does. But based on what I've seen, one day could literally mean thousands of lives, hundreds of lives. So I want to do what I believe, and it's a, again, I respect all both sides of this deal, but we're all, again, we're all in this together. We want to get through this as soon as possible. Thank you. Hi, Mark Standriff, 